Hi everyone, welcome to Millennium Live. My name is Katie Perry and today I am joined with Pat Calhoun, who's the CEO at Espressive. So hi Pat, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. Thanks for having me. Before we jump in and we get to the nitty gritty, can you just tell us about Espressive who any, for anyone who may not know or have heard of you and what is your product and the core value proposition for customers? Yeah, absolutely. Um, for me to explain Espressive, let me talk a little bit of my history and why I even decided to start this company, because that will help quite a bit. Prior to Espressive, I was running products at ServiceNow. And when I was at ServiceNow, I met with a lot of CIOs. And the message that I was hearing from them was very consistent. What they were telling me was that their service management tool was helping them digitize a lot of their back office processes. But when it came to the employee experience, it was like 1995. People are still calling and emailing for help. There's very little automation, a lot of reliance on humans to get help. And I really felt like the world was changing and the advances in AI, the advances in NLP really was providing a platform that people could leverage to deliver a much better experience for your employees. Now, let me ask you, Katie, if you had a problem with your laptop and you had an option of waiting on hold for three days or getting an answer in 30 seconds. I, I'm kind of curious, which one are you gonna choose? Definitely not the three day answer. Yeah, there you go, exactly, right? And so that's basically what we see quite a bit. So what is it that we do? We automate the help desk. Once our customers get deployed, they typically see somewhere between 50, 65% deflection rate. What a deflection rate means is that a problem was resolved with no human intervention. So imagine you run into a problem and you can actually get help in 30 seconds without having to wait, without having to, to, to call on anyone. Super simple. The experience, of course, is very important. But fundamentally, that's what we do. We're all about automating. But we've been talking about IT a lot. But we don't just have IT problems. Like, I don't know, maybe you have an HR question. Maybe you're planning on taking a leave. Or maybe, maybe you have a payroll problem. Or maybe, maybe there's an issue in a conference room. What if you could actually go to a single place and ask it virtually anything and it actually knows how to help you? That would be phenomenal, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's what we do. That's awesome. So I'm curious, since the pandemic hit and everyone has been working from home since last March, how has that impacted the help desk? Yeah. So you think about, um, you know, Mary in finance, who has never actually worked from home ever. And now she's actually been given a new laptop and says, okay, have fun. She gets home. She doesn't even know what a VPN is. Like, well, where do I start? What am I supposed to do? And so who takes the hit? The help desk has taken the hit. What we've actually seen across, across the industry is a 35% increase in tickets in the help desk in both IT as well as HR, 35%. And very few organizations have seen a massive increase in their budget that they can just hire a bunch of a bunch more people in the help desk. So that has been really difficult. But what the pandemic has actually done is it shifted the way people work. It's actually shifted the types of technologies that IT is investing in. So digital transformation, of course, has taken a, you know, a huge acceleration, whether it's Slack, Teams, Zoom, you name it. As employees, we're now being faced with these new tools. How do we use these tools effectively? How are we supposed to, like, how do I set up a Zoom background as an example? How do I set up a video filter? All of these things, I don't really know. And technically, I could Google it. But I also know that there's people in IT and that's their job and I'm just going to call them and they're going to give me an answer and they're going to do my research for me. So phenomenal. That's exactly what I'm going to do. So as a result of that, it's actually been a challenge for a lot of organizations as people now have to leverage new tools working in a way that they've never worked before. And that puts the basically the burden on, on the help desk. But I'll tell you the other thing that's also caused some problems is for people who have are working from home, who have distractions at home. I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean, I have kids, right? But, you know, whether it's kids on Zoom, it's whatever it happens to be, the number of hours and the time that people have available to work is limited, right? Sometimes you, you have these distractions. And so when you want help, it has to be help on your time, not when it's convenient for whoever's on the other side of the phone. 
So we've actually found as well that being able to go to a virtual agent and ask a question when I actually have availability is much better than being put on hold. And sure enough, it always works this way. The person gets to me as soon as I walked away from my computer because there's a problem with Zoom, right? Always, always. Exactly. So I'm curious, as organizations are shifting to these collaboration tools, are they leveraging them to help offload the questions for the help desk or no? Yeah, they, they have. And I think what a lot of organizations have found is that it's creating a level of complexity. So Slack and Teams, right? Phenomenal platforms, we use them. Um, and what a lot of organizations are thinking now, because people are starting to find that they're living in Slack and Teams, like I used to live at the office, I used to live in my cubicle, I used to live at the coffee machine. Now I live in Slack and Teams, right? And well, in Zoom. <laughs> um, <laughs> And so people just naturally want to gravitate towards those tools as a way to communicate for virtually anything, including raising your hand and asking for help. But how do you do that in an effective way? So imagine, for instance, that as, a, as an IT organization or an HR organization, I'm going to open a channel that says, you can now come here to help, for help. And I can go into this channel and I can ask it virtually any question. If I'm a 10,000 person organization, and there's hundreds of people asking questions, stuff is just flying off the screen, right? Like I asked a question and then like, I don't, even, I don't even know where it is anymore. And on the help desk, you're trying to manage your workload based on all these things coming in at the same time. It's creating a not awesome experience for everybody. Even though that's the channel that we wanna use, it's not an awesome experience. The other problem that this has actually created is if I'm on the help desk and I'm being assigned to act to assist in Slack or Teams, I now have to swivel chair into my service management tool to make sure that every question that I answer, I'm capturing it so that my leadership knows what questions are being asked, how many questions are being asked, how do I do capacity planning, blah, blah, blah. And what we've actually seen with most organizations is people don't do that. And so they're spending a lot of time in Teams, there's a lot of time in Slack, they're answering questions and a lot of stuff is not showing up inside the system of record. And as a result, stuff doesn't show up. And now all of a sudden they think that they're getting fewer calls, but in fact, the teams are busier, but the metrics don't show it. So what we're now seeing is that organizations are saying, we've embraced these collaboration tools, but we need to figure out how to throw digital virtual agents inside these tools and not, not humans. So imagine now that I can go to a help channel and I can ask it a question and all of a sudden a virtual agent just comes back and says, here's your answer, right? Or I don't have an answer for you, but I'm gonna connect you to a human that knows the answer. So we've now created a platform that makes it a lot more effective for me to get help but it also connects into the IT and HR system of records so that whenever, whenever I do ask a question, it's being recorded. And if there's a handoff to a human, everything happens using the existing processes that they've had in place for quite some time. Right. So I know the initial purpose of these virtual help agents was to answer questions. So do you have a next step or what is next for them? Yeah. Um, when we started this company four and a half years ago, wow, I can't believe it's been that long. Um, it, that really was the focus, right? The focus was how can we make sure that when people ask questions, we can have effective answers that eliminates the need for somebody else to go and find an answer for them. And that's, I think we've done a really good job. But now people are saying, how else can I reduce the load on my team? And it's right now, it's all about automation. I'll right. give you a couple of use cases, right? We have a customer where every time they onboard a new employee, a new hire, they have to create 20 tickets for basically 20 tickets that are access related for different applications, right? So I have, I need 20 different applications. So there's 20 tickets and there's humans, of course, that create the tickets, that manage the tickets, that create the accounts, blah, blah, blah. Well, now somebody can literally say, and a manager can go in and say, I have a new hire, collect the information on the new hire and everything is fully automated, including the creation of the accounts, wow. right? Imagine you wanna get added to a mailing list. Well, today you could technically go and try to find the place in Office 365, or you probably do what everybody else does is just call the help desk and say, I need to be added to this mailing list and have somebody else do that work for you. Or you could just go to a virtual agent and say, I need to be added to the mailing list and it does it for you. 
So now what we're seeing is automating tasks, password reset, creating accounts, managing distribution lists. We're actually seeing a use case being deployed by customer now where they're using a virtual agent in front of their finance system. So whenever you have a question about a, a purchase request or a purchase order, you want to create one, you want to change one, you want to cancel one, you want to get a status on it. All you need to do is just use a human language and natu your natural language and just ask the virtual agent. Behind the scenes through our integration, we can basically start creating all of that content. So it's really now about completing tasks much more so than just answering an answering questions. Wow. So I know you just mentioned the 20 tickets for someone being onboarded, but do you have a specific example of a customer case study of the value of implementing this virtual help desk? We have a, um, a healthcare customer um, that just went live about three months ago. And for them, they're, um, it's, I mean, it's a phenomenal space that they're actually in. And for them, their number one problem was they're growing so fast they can't hire enough people in the help desk. They can't hire enough people in HR to keep, to keep pace of, of the growth of the company. So they've made a conscious decision that they're going to go with a virtual agent so they can basically maintain their headcount, right? They've been deployed now for two and a half months. They're seeing almost 60%, uh, 58% to be specific, 58% of employee questions are fully automated using our virtual agent in IT, in HR, and in facilities. And they are saying that they're seeing a path to 70%. Wow. 70%. Wonderful. We actually have a customer um, on the East Coast. It's a gas and electric company. This is a really interesting use case. They were outsourcing their help desk. This, is an, this one's an IT um, use case, but they were outsourcing their help desk. And it was offshore. The experience was not great. The employees were up in arms and they recognized that they had to do something different. So they basically, they, they changed their outsourcer to be an onshore outsourcer. The good news is employees really love the experience. The bad news is it was so expensive, the company couldn't afford it. So they decided to move away from the outsourcer. They went 100% virtual, 100% virtual. The first week that they went live, they saw 62% of all employee interactions were fully resolved with no humans. But the most important part, they saved 75% of the cost was saved after going with a virtual agent. So 75%, that's a huge amount of money. Oh. So a couple of really interesting examples of customers that have been very successful using our platform. Absolutely. And those are great examples. Well, Pat, I don't want to keep you too long today, but thank you so much for this conversation. It was so informative and it was great learning about Expressive. Thank you, Katie.